Hi guys, I'm Jim, this is The Lotus Diaries. Now it seems that one of my most popular videos has been my five things I really love about the Evora 400 video. So I need to do a five things that I really do not love about the Evora 400 video. Now, don't get me wrong, none of these things are really car breaking things. They are probably best described as, you know, pet peeves or just ants annoying or whatever kind of things. So it's actually taken me quite a while to compile this list because genuinely the car is fairly short on actual like design faults. Like I know my car's had a couple of issues, but they're not something that you're gonna have with every single uh, Evora. So the first thing that I really, really don't like is the petrol filler. When it opens, as you see, it kind of hits the bodywork. And I just worry that, you know, in a few months or maybe a year or two that it's just going to start wearing through the paint and i'm just going to have something here i did mention this to the factory and they said they are going to look into it filling up with fuel in this car is also a bit of a pain in the ass because the the fuel tank is sort of straight down so getting the angle right to, to get the nozzle in is kind of a bit of a pain in the ass but uh i also don't quite love the uh, plasticky petrol filler flap i'd really like a fancy posh metal one but uh that's lighter i suppose Next up is the engine start button. Now I don't like this button for a few reasons. The first reason is that it doesn't need to exist at all. If you're gonna have a start button, you need to have a full keyless entry system or at least keyless go system so that it actually makes sense and is worth having. Now what they have in this car is they have the key from a 1990s Ford, or if you wanna be fancy, a 2004 Aston Martin, and you put this key in and then you turn it and then you have to press the button. Now, to me, that just doesn't make any sense because that's making the process more long-winded than it needs to be. You know, cars back in the 60s used to have starter buttons until they realized that they could integrate it and have it so it was in the key barrel, and that was much, much better. So we're going slightly backwards with this. And the other reason that I don't like it is, as I've mentioned in a previous video, that the light stays illuminated and is really, really bright and is quite distracting at night, and it doesn't dim with all of the other the panels, all the buttons in this car do not dim. When you when you dim this dash down, the dash itself, the, the little dials, they dim, but this little bastard, this stays really, really bright. So I'm hoping one day Lotus can fix it, but we could be waiting a while. Next up is the gearbox. Now, hang on a minute. I had the gearbox as one of my favorite things in the car, didn't I? Yes, I did, and it still is. But the gearbox is also one of my least favorite things in the car, and this is why. This gearbox is sourced from a Toyota Auris diesel. Why is it sourced from the diesel? Because the diesel was the one that had the best torque handling capabilities. Unfortunately, it's fairly clear to most people that this gearbox is probably the weak link in the drivetrain. The engine is super, super strong, and apparently the engine is good for a lot more power than it's actually putting out. Unfortunately, if they do that, they're probably going to start having gearbox issues. And basically Lotus can't afford to keep replacing gearboxes left, right and center. So although the engine's power output figure of 400 horsepower is reasonable for a car of this class, the torque figure of 300 pound feet is actually fairly small for a supercharged vehicle. Let's bear in mind that the BMW E46 M3, which is a 3.2 litre naturally aspirated engine, puts out 270 pound-feet of torque. So there's no supercharger, no forced induction, nothing like that, but that has nearly the same amount of torque because it's got a gearbox that can take whatever the engine can make. So that's one just, you know, little niggle that I have. Next up, I generally love the design of this car, but there are a couple of things that if this was a German car, they probably would have taken away. Now, whenever it rains, you get a little buildup of water here, and most importantly, in the door handle, and they just sit there. So if you're not ready for it, you go to get in the car, and you open it, and you will soak your feet. That's frustrating. It also means once you clean the car, all the water gets in here and makes this bit really nice and dirty because it collects every single little bit of grit and grime that's got into this door handle. It's a shame really. It's a nice door handle, but I have one of those things, I guess. Go away here. And the last thing on my list, no, not the sat nav that everyone moans about, the glove box. 
What's wrong with it, you ask? <sighs> well, that's about it for all the stuff that annoys me about the car. So in the next video, I'll be telling you about more things that I love to bits about it. And uh, it's probably going to take me quite a while to find out five more things that I really don't like, because honestly, it's still a great car. Thanks for watching, guys. As usual, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.